For those who wish to run SPM commands from the command line, there's a way to do it from producing SPM.mat files as templates. This tutorial will show you the interaction between the MATLAB files which are created from the GUI and how they're produced in the command line. So for example, if we were to do the slice time and correction step, and here we select new session, and specify files here, and again let's say we just want our first run that hasn't had any operations done to it yet. So I'm going to select all of those and let's just fill in this field here. So there are 35 slices. Okay, so that's all we're going to fill in for this batch file right here. And if you click on the save button, it's going to ask you to save out a mat file. I'm going to overwrite this here. Let's just call it test.mat. Right, so going back to our command line, if we load this test.mat file, notice that we have these two new variables here. There's jobs and job helps. Let's focus on jobs for right now. So we can see here that it's a structure, and we look within the first cell of that structure, we get this field called temporal. So let's look within there again. And you see it's temporal, and there's another field, ST, which stands for slice timing. Now all these features here are the different aspects of the slice timing correction that you saw in the graphical user interface. Now we already filled in all those scans, as you can see here. Okay, so all of those different files that we selected. And we also filled in the end slices. Okay, so all we need to do if we wanted to run this through some loop or some program in order to batch it from the command line, what you can do from the command line is you can fill in each of these like so. So each of these fields, which are in the jobs temporal.st field, you can fill those in with the necessary information. So for example, the TR is 2, and let's say the TA is 2 minus 2 divided by 35. And the slice order is, let's see here, if I recall correctly, this is how you should do it. Yeah. And the last field is going to be the reference slice. And I believe we'll just have that be 1. Okay, So that's it, and then you just save out this same test.mat file. And now if you go back to the graphical user interface, you can click here to load that mat file test.mat. Notice now that all these fields have been filled in with what we put in in the command line. So this is a very simple introduction to this interface between both the, the GUI and the command line and how you can fill in stuff from the command line and then load it back into the GUI. In a later tutorial we'll show you how you can actually run this from the command line using the spm job man command.